So, this is music theory for guitar players. Lesson one, we're just going to talk about major scales. How to make them just in general, in kind of music theory terms, and then how to make them on guitar. Um, there's a bunch of download links for scratch paper that you can use during this lesson or after, whatever works for you. Um, it's very helpful, though, to be able to print something out and write it down. really helps it stick in your head. Uh, anyways, here we go. Hope you enjoy it. Okay, so here we are. Uh, music theory for guitar players lesson one. Um, I wanted to start this because I wanted to help guitar players get a sense of how music theory actually maps out on the guitar because it's a little it's a little confusing how even like a, a piano and a guitar compare. And so today we're gonna go over the basics. We're gonna talk about major scales and we're gonna talk about kind of why they end up being the shapes they end up on guitar. So first thing I want to talk about is whole steps and half steps. So the shorthand we're going to use for this is going to be W and H. And now, the magic formula for making a major scale is whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. If you have a difficulty memorizing this, I kind of like to think about it as you have two whole whole halves separated by a whole. Now, what the heck does this mean? What I like to do is I like to write out one through eight, and I like to remind people that the whole steps are not the names of notes, but they're actually the names of the movements between notes. If you're confused about what a whole step and half step is, um, you can think of it as, uh, on guitar at least, it's when you move from one fret to the very next fret. That is a half step movement. Moving from one fret and then skipping a fret to the next fret is called a whole step. On piano, moving a half step is when you play any note and then play the very next available note, whether that's a black note or a white note. In the case of D to E flat here, that's a half step. If you're going from E to F, also a half step. If you're going from F to F sharp, half step. Um, whole steps on piano are anytime you skip a note. So C to D is a whole step because I'm skipping this guy. Uh, I can go from E flat to F, and as long as there's a note in the middle, that's a whole step. F to G, also a whole step. So when you're making a scale, you start on a note. And in this case, we're going to pick a C. So if we start on C and we move a whole step, we end up on D. Move another whole step, get to E. Move another whole step, get to F. Or excuse me, move a half step, C, half step. So we got whole step, whole step, half step. And then we've got whole step, whole step, whole step, and half step. And this is now a C major scale. So this is the major scale formula. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you a neat trick to learn kind of why and how sharps and flats work. And I'm going to give you some scratch paper to help you make sense of kind of, I guess, why sharps and flats are even a thing. So here I've got this major scale scratch paper. And what I have on it is a piano. I think this stuff is a little bit more intuitive on piano, thanks to the black notes, but we are going to definitely convert it to guitar in a few minutes. So what I have here is I have whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. I've just got this scratch paper. Here's another formula over here. It just keeps going down. I'm not showing the whole page, but it just looks like that all the way down. And you can download this um, for free if you just follow the link in the description. Um, we're going to start with what we did on the page before. And I'm going to write in, starting on C, I'm just going to go C. So we already talked about how this fits, but this is going to be the template for what you're going to do for all the other scales. Write in the alphabet starting on whatever note you prefer. For now, it's C. And then we're just going to verify. So we got, okay, C to D. That's a whole step. Yep. 
Okay, D to E. It's supposed to be a whole step according to the formula, and D to E is a whole step. Now, E to F, we need it in the scale, we need it to be a half step. Good, it's a half step. G, or sorry, F to G. That's a whole step because we're skipping this guy. And G to A, yep, that's a whole step. A to B, yep, that's a whole step. And then B to C is supposed to be a half step, and it is, so we're good. Now, uh, why the heck does this matter? Well, here's why. Check it out. So if I say I want to start a scale on A, I can just write in the alphabet. I can go, okay, well, this is the order it goes in, so A. And what I like about this scratch paper is you have what the scale is supposed to be. Now we need to see if these notes fit, and if they don't fit, we can fix them. So let's start with A to B. A to B, yep, we're skipping a note, so it is in fact a whole step, so that's fine. So, so far in an A major scale, um, we have an A and a B. Now let's see here, B to C, it's supposed to be a whole step, and if we look here, oh, it's a half step. How do we fix that? Well. We go from B to C sharp, and now we've skipped C, so this C needs to be C sharp. And now, so far, in an A major scale, we have A, B, and C sharp, and that's correct. Now, from C sharp to D, it's supposed to be a half step. Let's check it. Uh, so we were on C, now we got C sharp. C sharp to D, because it's the very next note, it is in fact a half step, so we're good. So A, B, C sharp, D, D to E to make it a major scale, supposed to be a whole step, D to E is a whole step. Now let's go E to F, ooh, so this is supposed to be a whole step if it needs to be a major scale. So we gotta go E, not E to F, but E to F sharp, here we go. And now F sharp to G needs to be a whole step, is it? F sharp. G, not a whole step. We gotta adjust it so it goes F sharp to G sharp. Interesting. And now, there we go. This is an A major scale. A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, and A. Cool. Now, um, the reason I like to do it this way is because uh, C sharp and D flat are the same note. Here is a C, here's a C sharp, Here's a D, here's a D flat. They're the same note, but if I tried to make an A scale with a D flat, I would have I would end up with two Ds in the scale and no Cs. And this is why it's important to know the difference between sharps and flats, is because it's technically the same note, but we need to have a complete in order alphabet to make an actual major scale. Also, to make any scale, you need to have all the notes in order. Um, so, let's try a different key. Let's go with the key of F. Go over here, and I'll just write F, and then I'll write everything else in order. So now, let's fix it, because it's probably not right. Let's see, so F to G, supposed to be a whole step. So far, so good, that's a whole step, because we're skipping this little black note here, okay? G to A is supposed to be a whole step, and it, in fact, is a whole step. G, G sharp, A, or G, A flat, A. We just got that note in the middle. That's what makes it a whole step. Now, A to B, supposed to be a half step. Uh, let's see, A to B is actually a whole step, so how do we fix it here? So we could say A sharp, but remember, then we would have two A's in the key. We can't have that. So we gotta do something to the B to make it fit the major scale formula. So what we're going to do is instead of B, we're going to go to B flat. And now from B flat to C is a whole step. So that fits the scale. C to D, whole step, good. D to E, whole step, we're good. Skipping this note. And then E to F is supposed to be a half step. And it is a half step. Pretty cool. Um, if you get the point, you can just skip to the next section, but I'll just keep doing a few more of these. So let's pick, let's say you want to start on, let's say D flat. Whoa, let's try that. D flat, okay. So now we're just gonna, well, let's start here and we'll go, okay, we'll just do the whole alphabet. So D flat. 
So whatever you start with, you want to make sure you end with that as well. So now let's check this out. D flat to E is actually like, it's more than, it's actually a whole step and a half step. So we need to make it just a whole step. So we're going to go E flat. And now we've got from here to here, we're skipping D. And we're going from D flat to E flat, makes that a whole step. So that's correct. By the way, if you want to practice making flat symbols, it's basically like a little pointy B. Um, that's, you know, it's not quite a B like this. It's got a little bit of a point to it. And sharps are just, you know, hashtags. Um, also, if this is not making total sense to you, the idea with sharps and flats is if you push a note this way, you make it sharp. So if this is C, and then I want to convert it to C sharp, I got to move up to make it sharp. If you want to make a note flat, you move it this way. So here's a B, move it this way, now it's a B flat. Just, just for some good clarity here. So let's finish up this D flat scale. So we got D flat to E flat, that's a, that's a whole step, that's good. Now E flat to F is supposed to be a whole step. And E to F is a half step, so E flat to F is a whole step, so that's good. F to G is supposed to be a half step, and let's see, F to G is a whole step. So we gotta make it a half step, so we're gonna go with G flat. There we go. And then G flat to A is supposed to be a whole step, and it's, oh, we're in that weird situation where it's more than a whole step. It's a whole step and a half step. So we need to make it go to just a whole step. So we're going to go from G flat to A flat. Yep. Um, and then A flat to B. Here's A flat. Here's B. We're kind of in the same situation where it's a whole step and a half step. We need to make it just a whole step. And then let's see. B flat to C is a whole step, and it's supposed to be, so we're good. And then C is to D flat, supposed to be a half step, and C to D flat is a half step. So this is a D flat major scale. Um, let's do let's do one more, and then we'll call it good. And you can download this. Just look for the link in the description. Uh, let's do the key of B. B, and then just write out the alphabet. Cool. So B to C is a half step, supposed to be a whole step, so let's fix it. And then now we've got B to C sharp, and then C sharp to D is a half step, uh, supposed to be a whole step, so we gotta go to D sharp. D sharp to E is supposed to be a half step. Let's see, D sharp, E, I think we're good, okay. And now let's go from E to F. We know that's not a whole step, and it's supposed to be. So we got to sharp that. And then F sharp to G is supposed to be a whole step. It's not, so we got to fix the G. And then G sharp to A is supposed to be a whole step. It's not, so we got to fix the A. And then A sharp, which is here, it, to B is a half step. So we're good. So that's just kind of an example of how to use this major scale scratch paper. So let's move on to how to map this out on guitar. Okay, so here I've got some, what I like to call fingerboard scratch paper. Uh, it doesn't fit in, you know, uh, it doesn't fit in this camera very well because it, you know, should be twisted around. But I wanted you to look at it as if you're looking at kind of a chord chart. So up here we have all the open note note names. E, A, D, G, B, E. And then here are all the names of the notes without sharps and flats, just in order. And this scratch paper is really helpful for just visualizing what stuff looks like. So before, what we talked about is, uh, you know, E and F have half steps between like there's a half step between E and F, and then there's a half step between B and C. Everything else has a whole step between. And on guitar, that's what this looks like. It's a little more crazy looking than the piano, and the pattern is not quite as recognizable. But I wanna help just in a linear way, I wanna help you kind of understand how scales work on the guitar. 
And then we're going to scoot over to kind of wrapping them into the scales that you're more familiar with on guitar. But this is more about understanding how guitar works. So here we've got frets. Instead of dots, I've got third fret, fifth fret, seventh fret, ninth fret, twelfth fret. And actually, there's more off the page, but this is all I could fit, and that's just fine. So let's start with a C scale in a very linear way, just so it's just so it's visible. So if I circle a C here, this is on the first fret of the B string, and then we move a whole step. That means we're skipping a fret to D. We move another whole step, and we're at E. Then we move a half step to F. Then we move a whole step to G, whole step to A, whole step to B, and then a half step to C. So we have the major scale formula here. It's whole, whole, half, and then whole, 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 half. And that I'm just describing the movements. So C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C is whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. Cool, right? This is kind of, it's very linear. It, I wouldn't recommend really practicing that scale. It's kind of like a one finger scale, but so let's try that F scale that we did on the page before. So here's an F and then we got to move a whole step to G, whole step to A, half step to B flat, whole step to C, whole step to D, whole step to E, and then we've got this half step to F. And if you notice, same pattern, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. So in a sense, the sharps and flats are required, and let's say this is a B a flat, right, a B flat. I just wrote flat, but I meant to write B flat, but um, really all we're trying to do is play the same scale shape every time, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, and we're just naming it wh wherever it lies. Let's try another one. Let's do, um, let's do a D major scale. So we'll start with this open D, and we've got a whole step to E, whole step, F sharp, half step, and then we do whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. So even though we scoot back one fret, it still is the same shape as everything else. It's just whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. Um, this is all a major scale is. It's just, it's just whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. And in future lessons, I want to open up all the possibilities that this entails because it's pretty freaking awesome. So now, um, you can start on a sharp or a flat. Um, so I did a, uh, let's see, what did I do? I did a D flat scale before. Let's do a, a B flat scale. So here is a B flat. Um... And then we move a whole step. Now we're on C. Move another whole step to D. And then we move a half step to E flat. Can't be D sharp because we've already got a D. And then we move a whole step to F. Whole step to G. Whole step to A. And then a half step back to B flat. Whole, whole, half. Whole, 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 half. So, if you want to think about why scales are the way they are on guitar, um, well, we have this awesome kind of wrapping thing. So, if you notice, here's an A, here's another A. That's the same note. Here's a D, here's another D. Same note, different string. Here's a G, here's another G. Here's a B, here's another B. The strings just wrap around on themselves, so... Instead of playing this long linear scale like this, we could go B flat, C, D, E flat, F, G, A, B flat. And now we have this nice 
B flat, C, D, E flat, F, G, A, B flat. And now it all fits in one area, and it's a lot easier to see. Kind of cool, right? Um, and this shape, if you take a look at it for a minute, um, we're going to be using this shape a lot in the next little segment here. So give me a second to set this up. So let's map out some of these scales in, let's start with open position. So what open position even means is, means you're using as many open notes as possible. So on the page before, let's see, what scale should we do? Well, let's do an E major scale. Okay, my camera didn't cooperate with me on the focus for this section, so I'll have to pause and animate this here. So, I went from E to F sharp, that's a whole step, and then I went from F sharp to G sharp, that's a whole step. Now, I need to go a half step, and I could go to the A on the fifth fret here, or I could just go to the open A. And since I'm trying to use as many open notes as possible, I think I'd rather go to this open A here. And then from there I can go a whole step to B. And from there I can go a whole step to C sharp. Now from here I need to go a whole step. Well, in case it wasn't super obvious from earlier, a whole step is two half steps. So if I go a half step to D, which then would get me to this open D over here, and then go another half step, I end up on D sharp. So C sharp to D is a half step. D to D sharp is a half step. And that means C sharp to D sharp is a whole step. And then there's a half step to E here. Um, and this is called an open position scale. It looks like I wrote open position a little bit out of frame here, but the idea is open scales are about trying to play as many open notes as you can. And in this case, you can only play two, but still makes it kind of an open position scale. So we end up with E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D sharp, E, and that is an E major scale. Now we're gonna move on. And a side note that we'll talk about more maybe in another video, if if you want me to do a follow up on this, I totally will, because I'm thinking now that there's some stuff that I could probably cover as well that goes along with this, like uh, how the circle of fifths works and stuff like that. But for now, I just wanna talk about some nice movable scale shapes that are pretty cool. So we're gonna do the key of G. And I already know this, but if you wanna use the scratch paper to confirm that I'm right, a G major scale is G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is, uh, this one is open position. I'm actually gonna do, this is gonna be a closed shape, which means it is no open notes. So we're going to go starting here, we're going to go G, A. Now I need to go a whole step to B. Or if you've already figured out the notes, you can just circle them if you already know for sure that those are all the right notes. Um, we'll still confirm it in a minute just for fun. So we've got G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. Or we've got whole step. Oh, here's another A, whole step, half step, whole step, and then here's another D, you can check that's a whole step, yep, and then E to F sharp, whole step, half step. That is a G major scale. And if you notice, it makes the same shape as the, uh, I forgot what scale it was that we just did, but it's the same exact shape. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Um, if we go over to, this is a C major scale. We already know that C has no sharps and flats. So if we start on C, we just go in order. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. It's the same shape. It's moved down one string, but it's the exact same shape. Cool, huh? Now let's talk about the key of B, which we definitely, here, I'll make this note down here. This is a B major scale. Now, we did this on the other page, but let's just write out this shape. So this is something I like to, I like to call trust the system. And it's this idea that the more you learn about these shapes, the more you realize that the shape, if you memorize this shape, it will tell you 
what notes are in the key. But it's important to be able to figure it out both ways. But this is sort of like, instead of going the long way of writing out all the notes, you can just play the shape and then figure out what notes are in the shape. So here's B, C sharp. So I just scooted this shape down and it looks like what we have is B. That's pretty cool, right? Um, gee, these are just awesome things to think about. So let me reset for a second. Future lessons. There we go. We can start making chords in a major key. Um, and if that sounds interesting, you know, comment, let me know. Uh, also, if you have any questions, because um, I'm sure you might, and it wouldn't hurt to do a follow-up to this, because there's so much that goes into it. I mean, the thing is, all you gotta remember is <laughs> whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. This is the secret to pretty much everything, and we'll, we'll get into that more over time, but so in the future, we can make chords in major keys. We can also now, we can make minor scales and chord progressions. Uh, well, also, we can just talk about making chord progressions. So, what I'm excited for is this lesson is sort of like the precursor for uh, making chords in the major key, uh, making minor scales and making chords and chord progressions and all that stuff. Um, for our next lesson, some things that you need to know, some terms. A major scale is basically playing the notes in order and by that i mean if you tell someone to play a major scale in the key of c they're going to play c d e f g a b c right but if you say to play in the key uh, hang on i'll just write this if you say play in the key of c that means use the scale to make chords and to make solos and to make harmonies and like um when someone says that a song is in the key of c what they mean is that it's using notes from a c scale but to create chords and all this stuff anyways i'm very excited about the next lesson which is going to be either a minor scale or it's going to be um making chords and progressions in major and I, I'm more probably leaning on this one because this will help the minor key make a little more sense because the minor key is kind of funky. But um, let me know what sounds good to you. Comment below. Really appreciate it. Also, you know, download all the stuff. Yeah, uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know. Um, I hope it was fun for you. It was fun for me. Um, yeah. Thanks for watching. Let's do it.